Hello and welcome. I'm Millicent from Walker. Tonight, Acting President Professor Yemir Shibajo sacked Director General of the Department of State Services of a blockade of the National Assembly named Matthew Safer, Acting DG. Acting President condemns blockade of the National Assembly by men of the DSS, describing it as gross violation of constitutional order and the rule of law. Senate Minority Leader Gautula Pavia resigns his position, even as he keeps mum on possible defection from the PDP to the APC. And US President Donald Trump issues strong warning to anyone trading with Iran following his reimposition of sanctions in the country. On business news tonight, Bureau for Public Procurement plans collaboration with Federal Inland Revenue Service and Corporate Affairs Commission to counter procurement fraud in Nigeria. And on sports news tonight, former athletics world champion Atto Bolden believes Nigeria have talent that is yet to be discovered. We we'll begin tonight with the sack of the Director General of the Department of State Services, DSS, by the Acting President, Professor Yemi Shibajo, following the blockade of the National Assembly complex by officers under his watch. Professor Shibajo ordered the termination of Mr. Dara's appointment with immediate effect and also asked him to hand over to the most senior officer in the security service. The sacking of the DSS boss follows the standoff at the National Assembly where operatives of the Secret Service prevented federal lawmakers from gaining entry into the Assembly. It also comes after Mr. Dara had a closed-door meeting with the Vice President and the Inspector General of Police, Mr. Ibrahim Idris. Meanwhile, Mr. Matthew Seifer has been named the Acting Director General of the DSS. Before his appointment, he was in charge of the DSS training school. And the Vice President, Professor Yemesh Badu, did not only come hard on the Director General of the DSS, he also condemned the unauthorized takeover of the National Assembly by security operatives. The Vice President described the action as a gross violation of constitutional order, rule of law, and all acceptable notions of law and order. According to him, quote, the unlawful act which was done without the knowledge of the presidency is condemnable and completely unacceptable, end of quote. Professor Shibajo assures Nigerians that all persons within the law enforcement apparatus who participated in what he called a travesty will be identified and disciplined accordingly. And the barricade of the National Assembly by officials of the Department of State Services prevented lawmakers, National Assembly staff and journalists from gaining access into the Assembly complex. Lawmakers from the opposition People's Democratic Party had trooped to the Assembly alleging plans by senators from the ruling All Progressives Congress to impeach the President of Senate and his deputy. The PDP lawmakers were later given access to the Parliament, but curiously, no APC senator was seen in the National Assembly. Well, our correspondent Linda Akigwe reports. This is the National Assembly of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. And this is the site that greeted National Assembly staff and lawmakers on Tuesday morning. Armed officials of the Department of State Services barricaded the gate of a National Assembly complex, preventing lawmakers, workers and journalists from gaining access into the Assembly. At about 7 a.m., federal lawmakers from the opposition People's Democratic Party, PDP, made their way to the National Assembly, alleging the plot to impeach the Senate President and his deputy by lawmakers from the ruling All Progressive Congress, allegations which APC lawmakers had denied weeks ago. Interestingly, no APC senator is present here. These lawmakers are from the PDP, and they insist that they must be allowed to enter into the National Assembly. Shut them! This is all about APC, this is all about PDP. This is Nigeria for some more money for it. Enough of this woman from the actual police. They would have been assassinated every day. Police cannot do anything. We have our ID card. We are members of the house. I don't know. The security should be guarding us, but not uh, uh, preventing us from entering here. 
you know. Are they plot to impeach the, the Senate president? president? <laughs> what happened the last week, I uh, 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 have already said that. So, what, what I, what anybody want to succeed in this issue, I'll, I'll leave that to God. An hour later, the lawmakers are allowed into parliament. However, there is still no sign of any APC senator around. Not long after, an APC lawmaker in the House of Representatives arrives. Thirty minutes later, he comes out and speaks to journalists. Listen to me. Listen, do you see any APC member apart from me here standing with you? Because they only communicated to PDP member. That's why they are here. We were not told. I wasn't told. So those are the questions that should be posed to them. Activists are at the gate singing protest songs, condemning the barricade of a National Assembly by officials of the Department of State Security Services. The clerk of the National Assembly arrives, but he refuses to enter into the assembly complex without his staff. Where well, staffs are here and they cannot go in. Even if I'm asked to go in, am I going to walk alone in the office there? No, sir. A few moments later, the Deputy Speaker of the House of Representatives arrives and makes his way into the complex. We are supposed to meet here today, the leadership of the National Assembly. The meeting was called by the Senate President to come and meet here by 12 o'clock today. And that was why I drove in. Sorry, I'm sorry. for that meeting. Well, has a meeting been held now? No, the meeting has been called off because I didn't even know that there were other issues until I got here about quarter to 12. Nearly seven hours later, the DSS officials leave, ending the barricade of a National Assembly. Come back, come back, come back, come back. Inside the National Assembly, we see PDP lawmakers seated in the lobby. Suddenly, the Senate president emerges. Moments later, the crowd of lawmakers and staff disperse, ending a long day of suspense and intrigues. No word yet from APC lawmakers on if indeed there was an alleged impeachment plot against the Senate President and his deputy. However, the Senate President is expected to address a news conference. Linda Akibi, Channels Television News. Well, the Inspector General of Police, Mr. Ibrahim Idris, says operatives of the Nigeria Police Force were not involved in the siege of the National Assembly. He addressed State House correspondents after a closed-door meeting with Acting President Professor Yemi Shibajo. Mr. Idris said the standoff at the National Assembly complex came as a surprise. The SAC Director General of the Department of State Services, Mr. Lawandara, and the Chief of Staff to the President, Alhaji Abba Kiari, were present at the meeting with the Acting President. Police involved? No, no, we're not. The fun to me is, is, is a surprise to me. You know. Well, they said they got orders from above, so why is it a surprise who, to you? Who said? I mean, that's what we heard. I don't know. I don't know who said it, but like I said, police are not involved. Saying with activities at the National Assembly, it's not the first time lawmakers were prevented from entering the National Assembly. In 2014, lawmakers were barred by security operatives from entering the National Assembly on the first day of plenary following the defection of the then Speaker, Mr. Aminu Tamduwal. Federal lawmakers forced their way into Parliament by scaling the gate. Our correspondent Terry Kumi chronicles the events that led to the barricade of the National Assembly by security operatives today. October 28, 2014, former Speaker of the House of Representatives, Aminu Tambuwal, now the Sokoto State Governor, defected from the then ruling People's Democratic Party to the newly emerged opposition, the All Progressives Congress. I wish to hereby formally notify all of you of my membership of the All Progressive Congress. November 20, 2014, lawmakers were barred by security operatives from entering the National Assembly on the first day of plenary since the defection of the Speaker. However, lawmakers forced their way in by scaling the gate.
Fast forward to 2018. History repeats itself as lawmakers, journalists and National Assembly staff are prevented by security operatives from gaining access into the assembly complex. Is that what you actually call for? Do you call for this kind of a change? Many trace the genesis of today's incident to the day when over 50 federal lawmakers from both chambers defected from the ruling APC to the PDP. After due consultation with our constituents and stakeholders in our constituency, in proper recognition of Section 681G of the Nightmare Constitution as amended, and for the fact of our party, the old progressives, is hereby majority faction. We hereby inform the Senate that we, the undersigned, changing our political affiliation from the old progressive Congress to the People's Democratic Party. The House of Representatives, sponsored by the old progressive Congress, APC, wish to notify you of the change of our political party from APC to the People's Democratic Party. After that defection, the National Assembly proceeded on a long recess. Several meetings between the presidency and the Senate president did not stop Dr. Bukola Saraki from announcing his defection to the PDP on the 24th of July 2018. This sparked several reactions from the APC, including calls for him to resign his post as the Senate president. If for your personal reasons, which he has enumerated, that we don't need to debate them, you have chosen to go to another family, it is just a matter of honor that you leave the crown uh, in the house uh, that the crown belongs to. What followed were a series of meetings among lawmakers on the platform of the APC and the presidency, prompting allegations and denials over plans to remove the Senate president and the deputy Senate president. And then, on Tuesday, August 7, a day the leadership of the National Assembly was meant to hold an emergency meeting, lawmakers, staff of the National Assembly and journalists arrived at the National Assembly to be met by hood-wearing security operatives who prevented everyone from gaining access into the complex. Terry Ikumi, Channels Television News. But the turbulence in the National Assembly did not cover up the story of defections which has rocked the country's political circle in recent weeks. With the latest coming from the Senate Minority Leader, Godfrey Pabia, who resigned his position in the upper legislative chamber today. In a letter addressed to the Deputy Senate Minority Leader, Senator Pabia states, quote, This letter is to formally inform you of my resignation as the Senate Minority Leader with effect from August the 4th, 2018. Let me thank the Senate Minority Leadership, our distinguished colleagues and our great party, the PDP, for the opportunity to lead the caucus in the last three years, end of quote. Senator Pabia's resignation appears to confirm speculations of his plans to defect from the opposition People's Democratic Party, but he did not mention that in his letter. It also comes after his meeting with the President in London on Sunday and the APT National Leader, Bola Tinubu, yesterday during which issues about his impending defection are believed to have been discussed. Well, we also hear that some governors under the platform of the People's Democratic Party, PDP, have described uh, the blockade of the National Assembly by the DSS as a joke capable of making Nigeria the laughing stock of the world. Governor Samuel Otom of Benue State in a statement wondered why the ruling party would want to prosecute its defecting members. Governor Anyesum Wike on his part believes the blockade is a plot to impeach the Senate President and the Deputy. They always use security to go and perpetrate evil. They don't have the numbers. How? Everybody knows the answer is to impeach Bukhara Saraki and the Kolemadu. That is the truth of the matter. Why do you want to impeach Saraki? For custody. Why? People forget history. Tambawa was speaker. When he was in PDP, he declared to APC. He never resigned as speaker. I'm sure that time, even the president, the president, president acknowledged. I heard him. So what's the difference now? In part two, after the break, we'll take a look at reactions trailing the blockade of the National Assembly complex by officials of the Department of State Services. And we'll be joined by a senior advocate of Nigeria, Delia Adishina. We'll also be joined by a member of the National Assembly, Senator Chukuka Otazi. Plus, the federal government warning and dangers of fake news and how it threatens the credibility of the 2019 election. Please stay with us.